Hello everyone, Glenda Mollett here and welcome to my craft room this morning. Hi, I'm going to share with you how to make a card using the um, poinsettia petal stamp set, the coordinating dies, and some red velvet specialty paper that will be retiring soon. We got one month left and then the beautiful red flocked paper is going to be gone. So I'll flip you over to my desk view and we'll get on with making the cards. I hope you've had a wonderful week so far. Where we are, it's raining, raining, raining. Um, some of you may have heard of the atmospheric river that is attacking British Columbia, Canada right now. And we're right smack dab in the middle of a horrible week of weather. Thankfully, we don't live where the flooding is. But oh my goodness, it is not a good thing out there. Okay, enough of my chitter chatter. Let's see if we can make a card. <clears throat> so this is the card I'm going to share with you today how to make. And it's got the um, Merry Melody embossing folder in the back. Back The flower is made with that gorgeous red velvet. And then I've got some, um, what's it called? Painted Christmas designer paper. Now the good thing is that although this designer paper will be hibernating at the end of our mini catalog on the 3rd of January. It will be back next year. And who knows if the prices are going to be the same. So you might want to get some of this if you really like it like I do. And then <clears throat> I've done my sentiment on um, a piece that I punched out of the picture this dies. And I've just layered it. The center of the flower is a little bit of ombre glimmer paper. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you want the measurements and stuff for this card, you can find a link to the measurements and a link to the supply list in the description of my video. Just have a look at it. So I've done most of the work so that this doesn't take too long because I like to keep my Facebook or my YouTube lives down to a minimum. So a point set of petals is the stamp set I am using. Good morning, Janet. And the coordinating point set of dies. And then the Mary Mel Melody embossing folder. Do you see that? It's actually built upside down. So when you, if you can re read music, you're good to go. I can't read music, so I had to ask somebody. So you just got to make sure that the, the treble clef is facing the right way or there is little numbers right there. Otherwise, don't sweat it. It is what it is. And that's what I say. Just put it on and enjoy it. Now, picture this dies. It really makes a cute um, card front where you cut the holes out and put stuff in behind it, and pop it up and make it kind of like a, a diorama type card. But you can also use these individual pieces to die cut for your cards. We don't have um, stitch circles anymore. So I was really excited when I saw these ones. And they're the perfect size for sentiments. And then this one, beautiful sentiment pieces. So I'm going to share with you one of those. I'm using Merry Christmas from the Evergreen Elegance stamp set. Now this one will not be retired. This one is in this one is in our annual catalog, so you have until um, the beginning, the end of April to get this. Good morning, Holly. Good morning, Shanna. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for coming and sharing comments with me. I have some red rhinestones that I'm going to be finishing off the card with. So I stamped the inside as well. And I'll show you how I got that gorgeous color going around on the inside as soon as I get my marker because I forgot it. So I've already done all of the die cutting and all of the embossing just because it's just a time saver. And I'm going to put my rhinestones aware, away where I am not going to lose them because those little things, they sometimes times go astray. I have the pets poinsettia is four pieces. So I have those all die cut. Now, funny, a funny story. Well, it's not really funny. I felt really bad. But I did this with my group of seniors ladies last Wednesday. 
and they all unpack their kits and they're wondering where their fourth layer is because I'd made all the kits up and forgot this layer. So I think I'll cut some and take them in tomorrow when I go back. So I've done a little bit of shaping with the petals just so they're not so flat on the card. I have a piece of five and a quarter by four for the inside. So I'm just going to put that in here so I remember that I'm not stamping on it. <laughs> the vellum goes on here first. Now, am I going to be able to tell which way is which? There. That's the right way up, I do believe. So because this is embossed, it's really easy to put onto your card front and make it stick. First of all, I can put a, a adhesive right in the middle, but then I can put glue dots underneath the embossing parts because um, they're not going to show through. Okay, so I'm just, oops, I was going to put it right in the middle or all the way around the outside. That's not going to work. So I'm just going to put some, this is all going to be covered up. I just found three more red rhinestones. Who knew I had two packages of them in there? Oops. Okay, so I get my glue dots out. And I'm just going to find where they are, first of all. And on each of the corners, right underneath where the embossing is, I'm going to put a glue dot just to hold the corners down. That's why when I did the embossing, I tried to... Um, Uh-oh. Uh, ah! That was really dumb. Why did I put that down? Oh well. I tried to put embossing on the bottom and the top so that I could put my glue dots on there and they won't show. Maybe I should have put the glue dots on first. There we go. It's off my finger. Oh my gosh. Some days things just don't go the way they're supposed to go. Okay. I think that's the right way up. If it's not, I apologize to all of the musical people out there because I am not. I used to play the bagpipes when I was in high school. I was in a bagpipe pipe band and um, I couldn't read the music to save my life. I had to play by ear, which is I, it worked for me. That's what is important. Okay, so now you can choose either side of your designer paper. And I've chosen to put it right from edge to edge. There's no um, frame around the outside. So I'm just going to put this on my card and see which side I want to use. Because I might just use the other one just because I can. I think so. Yep. Okay. I'm going to put adhesive on this one and then layer it onto my real red. Get it on there. Use my stamp and seal. I love this stuff because as you just saw, it actually allows you to lift things up. Okay, so this is going to go in the middle right up against that far side. Kind of getting things straight here. And now there's a little tiny bit of a um, overlap there, so I'm just going to cut that off. And get some adhesive on the back of this. And put that on top of the embossed one oops let's do it the right way up that would help in the middle ish there we go okay so now I'm going to stamp the sentiment in real red to match the um, red velvet This is just long enough. Give it a good stamp. 
Yay! It worked. It's always a good, happy dance when it works when I'm on live stamping. Okay. Oops. That was my finger in the red. I'm going to stamp my inside of my envelope. So it goes, it's a landscape card. And I'm just going to put one down here in the corner. And then I think I'll just add a little bit of another one up here. Why not? Change it up a bit. Give it a little bit of pizzazz. And do the same thing on the envelope. So today, I'm hoping it stops raining. Because... It would be nice to have a day without rain. I thought yesterday was going to be that day, but nope. Thankfully, I scooted out to the post office before the rain started. That was a, a bonus. And today, I don't have to go anywhere. I get to stay home. Okay, putting my inside in. Oh, wait. I just about did it. So I'm going to show you how to get that red striper on the outside. I'm using my Stampin' Write marker and holding it like this, not like this, because this way I have more control over getting it the tip. And I'm going to go almost straight up and down and just go around the outside like this. Just run that. Now, we used to do this when we had the old style stamping up ink pads, the fabric ones. We used to do this just on the edge of the ink pad, but I don't like doing it on my foam ones because you never know when it's going to cut into your foam pad. All right, let's just pop this in now. Oh, I forgot to put the sentiment on. Oh, well. I can do it now. So I've got a I've got a contest coming up. So you'll have to be part of my VIP group to get in on the contest. I'm going to do a contest to see how many Christmas cards I've made this year. Not different Christmas cards, but how many cards. Because usually when I do a class, um, I do three of the card, three of each card. So that would count as three. Good morning, Carmen. So if you're in my VIP group, watch out for that contest. I counted them all this morning. So I'm just um, shaping the petals. Now on this one, I just shape them all up like this. But this one, I'm going to shape them down. And then I'm going to just flip the, the ends because it'll just show you the difference between the two. And it's really easy to do. And then when you push it down, it doesn't, it kind of has a, a different look to it. Now when you're doing this with normally you have to be really careful you don't rip your cardstock but this um, red velvet is nice and thick so I, I can be a little bit more aggressive with it. Now if you wanted this to stay up permanently and not have to worry about whether it gets flattened in the mail or not you could just stick some dimensionals underneath there. Okay, and one last one. This one I'm just going to do straight up because it's a little small. Okay, now the way to put this together is with glue dots. And glue dots are your friend. It's, the velvet is really hard to get to stick to anything. So I'm just going to put a couple of them on there and then layer that on this one like that. And then I'll put a couple on this one. What would we do without glue dots? I tell you. I go through so many of these things because I've found that 
when I'm creating, sometimes I put stuff down and then I decide, oh, no, it needs to be attached a little bit more. Hi, Connie. So then I'll just slip some glue dots in underneath, like if I have um, branches or something. And I don't want to put them down till I get everything or organized. So I'll put the branches in there and then I'll use my pick a, take your pick tool or pokey tool, whatever you have, and just slide them in underneath there so that it makes things stick a little bit better and they don't get caught in the envelope or anything okay last one going on there we go now get some glue dots on this one Bring my card in and we'll just stick this on here. I haven't put the Merry Christmas on yet, so I'm not going to push it down completely till I see. Now, see, I have a I have an issue there, so I have to move. Let's just pop this up and get it on there. Scissors. There we are. Get that onto the card. Okay. Now that's going to go over as far as I can get it right over to the edge of the card, and I'm going to do it in the lower one third of that strip of designer paper. And hopefully I'll get it straight. Never push things down until you've made sure they're straight. There we go. All right, now we can put this on and I can play with the, I have to make sure that that doesn't go out past the edge of the card. So just turn it because some ways there, see how I turned it? Now I can clear that and I can still have the Mary and I, I lift it up just a tittle. There we go. I don't want those sticking up like that on this one. So I'm just going to play with the, there we go, just the bottom layer. Okay, now I'm going to put the center in. This is a piece of glimmer paper, the ombre glimmer paper. Another glue dot. Stick it in the center there. Like that. And then just add some red rhinestones as accents. Um, one here. One here, I think. Okay, this one's in the wrong spot. Lift it up. Move it down a tad. There. I just wanted to highlight the flower this time. And seeing as I've got more here, let's just put five on. Oh, there's Shanna in my head again going, mix up your embellishments. Sorry, Shanna. But I really want the red ones. There we go. And I don't like putting an uneven number, so there's five on there. Or I don't like putting an even number. Now I'm going to get my yellow daffodil delight, which I did not put on the, the supply list. But I just want to keep forgetting that that end of my daffodil delight is hooped. Just put some yellow in the center of my poinsettia in here. 
and a little bit on the envelope as well, just to break up the redness of that. Give your eyes a little bit of relief. And there we are. Shanna, you're in my head all the time now. I could have put pearls on there too. Pearls would have been cute. There we go. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Carmen. I'm so glad you guys were able to join me this morning. I hope you have enjoyed my velvet poinsettia journey. Let's get things put away here. Organize my life a little bit. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and that you get to be crafty. It is, Janet, it's a real quick one once you get the die cutting done. So it takes a bit to die cut, but you, if you make your piece big enough, you can get all four, four, yeah, four layers of the poinsettia in one die cut. But so works really good. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Shanna. Carmen, so nice of you ladies to join me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see, thanks, Bonnie. I will see you Thursday night at 8 o'clock in my VIP group for another stamping presentation. Stampin' smiles, and bye for now. As soon as I get over there to end it. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>